Hello, welcome to the channel Why Stories. Enjoy watching. Ernesto had just finished a lengthy surgery. Exhausted, he collapsed onto the couch in the doctor's lounge and immediately fell asleep. It had been a challenging case. His fellow surgeons hadn't dared to take on such a task. It was a heart surgery on a three-month-old baby. The parents of the unfortunate child had spent the entire night in the corridor, unable to close their eyes. When the nurse came out and announced that everything had gone successfully and the patient would live, they rushed into the room. But they weren't allowed to come in. Go home, get some rest, and come back tomorrow, the nurse told the parents, who were barely standing on their feet. Can we at least talk to the doctor? The mother asked. Ernesto can't see you right now. He spent over five hours in the operating room. All questions can wait until tomorrow. The day's hero, the surgeon Ernesto Torres, was sleeping, still wearing his glasses. He was utterly drained. None of his colleagues dared to disturb him. He was revered at the hospital. A 37-year-old young man with a successful career, hundreds of grateful patients, interns who didn't suspect his inner struggles, and a beautiful wife, yet for some reason, he didn't appear to be happy. Most of the time, Ernesto was at work. He took on extra shifts and complex surgeries. Even the group of interns assigned to him was originally supposed to learn under another doctor, but he declined, prioritizing his family. Despite his busy schedule, Ernesto received a modest salary, most of which went towards his wife's indulgences. Natalia, his wife, was demanding and strong-willed. She worked as a makeup artist, opened her salon, and invested all her earnings in her business's development. Therefore, Ernesto had to cover the rest of his wife's needs. Natalia was, of course, unhappy with the amount of time her husband spent at work. Grateful patients offered Ernesto gifts and assistance for successful surgeries, but Ernesto was a man of conscience. He refused gifts and bribes, believing he was simply doing his job. This also displeased his wife. Ernesto's rest after the surgery was short-lived. He fell asleep in the doctor's lounge at 4 in the morning. By 7, the phone call woke him up. Hello, Natalia, Ernesto replied before fully waking up. Hello. Did you spend the night at work again? She asked, dissatisfied. It was a difficult case, a three-month-old baby with a heart defect. I finished just over three hours ago. How did it go? Successfully. Aren't you coming home now? No. I asked to schedule a meeting with the parents at nine. I need to consult with them and explain how the surgery went. I'm working until 6 today, Ernesto replied. You could have taken a day off, his wife's voice noticeably darkened. After this much overtime, I'll soon forget what you look like. Darling, just imagine yourself in their shoes, the husband justified himself. They've been sitting here all night, too. It's their own flesh and blood. I can't leave people in such a situation. Well, thanks for waking me up. I need to freshen up a bit. You can't leave anyone except me. I hope they'll reward you properly for saving the child's life. Let's stop these discussions. You know my principles, Ernesto said in a stern tone. We have nothing at home. I walk to work because we can't afford gasoline. And you're talking about principles. Why work 24-7 if you're not getting paid for it? Natalia slammed down the phone. Arguments about work and financial difficulties were common in their family. The couple didn't have children. Natalia didn't want to take care of a child on her own, while Ernesto was more focused on his career and didn't think about children. Ernesto put the phone back in his pocket, stretched, and stood up. He had grown accustomed to his wife's complaints and didn't pay much attention to this argument. A nurse who had been on duty during the night came into the lounge. Ernesto... I'm going home. Julia is already at the hospital entrance. She'll be up here shortly. All right, go ahead, Olivia. Were there any issues during the night? The doctor asked. No, everything was fine. You're such a hero. It was a challenge to keep that baby's parents from seeing you. 
They really wanted to meet you. I scheduled it for nine. I remember. They told me when I was coming out of the operating room. Well, go home and get some rest. Ernesto talked to the parents of the child, whose life he had saved, and refused to take the envelope with a substantial sum of money. You'll need the money for your child's further treatment and recovery. The day in the hospital continued calmly and steadily, patient examinations, paperwork, and diagnoses. At lunch, he met with a colleague, a therapist, in the cafeteria. They had been good friends since their university days. Unlike Ernesto, his friend Antonio Esteban was well off and happy in his marriage. I heard you did surgery on an infant last night, Antonio asked. Yes, I was operating all night, so I need a double dose of coffee now, Ernesto replied. You don't take care of yourself. Why didn't you go home? What's waiting for me at home? To look at Natalia's dissatisfied face again? You should take a bribe at least once. It might change your mood, his friend suggested. Why is everyone harping on me? I'm just doing my duty. I took an oath, just like you did. I don't understand where you picked up this materialism. I just want to live normally, eat good and healthy food, drive a decent car, and keep my wife happy. I work as much as you do, by the way. I think Natalia won't tolerate you for much longer. It doesn't bother me. We got married as students. We didn't even have money for pasta back then. And we lived happily, Ernesto replied. And now what? It's different. Money corrupts. After a day of work, Ernesto didn't hurry home because he knew that an upset wife would be waiting for him, ready to express her grievances and make demands instead of offering support. It was 8 o'clock in the evening when Ernesto entered the apartment and couldn't find his wife. Where are you? The man decided to call his wife to find out why she was running late. I'm at Katerina's. I won't be back soon. Sit and think about how I feel while I wait for you after yet another extra shift, Natalia replied in a self-satisfied tone and hung up. Ernesto was actually relieved that his wife had chosen to stay at her friend's place. He could relax in peace and watch TV, and no one would be hovering over him with a list of demands and complaints. Natalia returned early in the morning when Ernesto was getting ready for work. He hadn't felt so peaceful and well-rested in a long time. When his wife entered the apartment, the tranquil atmosphere immediately turned tense. You know, Natalia began in an even tone, I lied to you yesterday. Really? So, what is it? Ernesto asked with interest. He didn't expect the revelation that followed. I wasn't at Katerina's. I spent the night with another man. Ernesto looked at his wife disapprovingly. His jaw tightened, but he held back. As a representative of an intellectual profession, he always carried himself with dignity and mastered self-control, even though a storm of emotions was raging inside him. So, Ernesto said, I suppose you have something else to tell me. Of course, Natalia replied immediately. You're a very good person, but you make a lousy husband. I can't even remember when you paid attention to me. You don't give compliments, you don't give gifts, and you're hardly ever at home. But I want to live in love and peace, spend time together on weekends. Your complaints are all valid, Ernesto agreed. I'll continue, don't interrupt, Natalia said. On another lonely weekend, I was walking in the park. I met a man there. He started courting me beautifully. By the way, you didn't even notice that I brought bouquets home. I started wearing jewelry. I did notice the bouquets. I thought you were receiving them at work. But you're right about the diamonds, I didn't pay attention. That's what I'm talking about. You don't look at me at all. In any case, I fell in love with this man. It's been going on for several months. He's wealthy, he has his own business, and he spends all his free time with me. So, forgive me, but I'm leaving you. All right. Maybe you deserve such a life, to be loved and showered with jewelry. I, of course, can't provide that for you. I need your consent for a divorce. I'm moving out today, Natalia said. Unexpected. 
but there's nothing more to say to you. If you want a divorce, you'll get it. I hope your conscience won't torment you too much, Ernesto replied. It was difficult for him, but he didn't resist his wife's departure. This had been coming for a while. In this way, Ernesto found himself entirely alone. His life was nothing more than his beloved work. He and his wife had divorced, and Ernesto's days became indistinguishable from one another. Antonio supported his friend, although he scolded him for losing a woman like Natalia. Are you not going to make any attempt to get her back? Antonio asked his friend. What's the point? She's been having an affair with someone else for months now. What can I offer her against the lavish courtship of that man? I'll let her go, Ernesto replied indifferently. One day, routine hospital life was disrupted by a scandal. A homeless woman was admitted to the ward with severe abdominal pain. She needed urgent surgery, but no doctor was willing to take on the case. Get her out of here. The nurse shouted at the orderlies. Just look at her, she reeks. She's dressed in who knows what. Her skin is turning gray. The woman is not going to survive. Where are we supposed to take her? Out on the street? Protested the orderly. We have a regimen here. We can't bring patients like her. Other patients will catch something from her. Take her back to where you found her. How can I just leave a dying woman on the street, Julia? We should help people, but you're pushing me towards sin, the orderly said. Ernesto heard shouting from his office. Since he had no other pressing matters, he decided to find out what was happening in his department. Julia, Ernesto addressed the nurse, what kind of commotion have you stirred up here? You've scared the patients. Well, take a look, the girl replied, pointing at the orderlies with a stretcher. Giorgio brought a dying homeless woman here and demanded that we operate on her. Why wasn't I informed? Ernesto asked in a stern tone. Is the operating room prepared? Are you planning to perform the operation? No doctor agreed to it. We're going to catch some infections from her. Quickly prepare the patient for surgery and the operating room. Call the assistants, Ernesto ordered. We must help everyone, not just a select few. The nurse rolled her eyes and gestured to the orderlies where to place the patient. Ernesto examined the woman and confirmed that surgery was needed immediately. A couple of hours later, Ernesto emerged from the operating room. Everything had gone well and the woman would survive. The doctor ordered her to be transferred to a hospital room. Since she had no documents, they couldn't complete her registration. Ernesto left her in the hospital under his personal responsibility. When the woman regained consciousness, Ernesto immediately went to see her. Hello. My name is Ernesto. I'm your treating doctor. The doctor introduced himself. I operated on you yesterday. Good morning, the patient replied. My name is Valeriana. I don't know how to express my gratitude to you. No need for that. Have a rest and recover. That's all you can do for now. I need your documents to complete your registration at the hospital. There might be some issues with that, Valeriana said, visibly saddened, as she looked away. Do you have any friends or family who could bring them to you? Ernesto asked delicately. Not exactly. I'm not sure if my documents are intact. And the girl who might have them certainly won't want to help me. Give me the number of that girl. I'll talk to her myself. I don't know her number, Ernesto. I don't have any documents. Ernesto left the room, leaving the conversation unresolved. He wasn't sure how to proceed. He had no right to keep a patient without documents in the department, but he had a feeling that Valeriana needed help for some reason. She appeared disheveled, and it was evident she had spent a long time living on the streets. However, her speech and mannerisms revealed a woman who had once been respectable. Most likely, some misfortune had befallen her. She hadn't ended up on the streets for no reason. Lunchtime arrived, and Ernesto descended to the cafeteria, where his faithful friend, Antonio, was waiting for him as usual. So, what's going on with that homeless woman? Antonio asked. 
Let's not refer to patients that way, Ernesto scolded him. And how do you already know everything? I'm just calling it like I see it. Rumors spread quickly, and your nurses need some extra work. They've notified the whole hospital. When do they find the time? Antonio shrugged. So, what are you going to do with her? Did she bring her documents? She only regained consciousness recently. She says she doesn't have any documents. And you forbid me from calling her anything? You understand what I mean? Antonio gave Ernesto a sidelong glance, as if he wanted to confide something in him. Of course, I understand, but I can't just throw her out in an alley with fresh stitches, Ernesto replied. Take her home, Antonio teased. Natalia left, and your place is empty. After all, you're our reliable savior. Ernesto didn't respond to his friend's sarcastic remark, but he pondered the idea. Maybe it was a good idea to have her stay in his apartment for a while until she got back on her feet. What are you thinking about? Antonio asked. I was just joking, in case you were taking it seriously and thinking about actually bringing her home. Nothing, Ernesto brushed off his friend. Eat up before it gets cold. After lunch, Ernesto visited the problematic patient again. He wanted to find out what had happened to her and how he could help. Valeriana, I'm sorry I left you this morning, but I needed time to make a decision about your situation. Please tell me the address of this girl. I'll go talk to her and try to get your documents. Ernesto, you don't understand. There's a complicated situation with Anna. She won't give you my documents, and I'm not even sure she has them. Who is Anna, and why can't she help you? Ernesto didn't comprehend Valeriana's situation. Valeriana burst into tears. She didn't want to delve into painful memories, but she sensed that sharing her story was necessary. I was married, Valeriana began her story. To a very good and wealthy man. We met after his divorce. He had a daughter, Anna, from his previous marriage. When we met, she was 12 years old. The girl immediately took a strong dislike for me, but I didn't try to replace her mother. I just wanted to establish friendly relations with her. But I failed. We lived together for several years. Anna grew up and finished school, but she never moved out. Then David, my man, died of lung cancer. The grief of his loss didn't bring Anna and me closer. She ended up hating me even more. A month after his funeral, she kicked me out onto the streets. That girl is insane. She threatened me with a knife, and I ran away in my home clothes. Of course, at that moment, I didn't think about gathering my documents or belongings. I was frightened for my life. What a nightmare, Ernesto reacted with horror to her story. Didn't you try to return home? I did try, but it was futile. Anna changed the locks, even though I didn't have any keys with me. Every time I tried to enter the apartment, she threatened to kill me. Then a young man moved in with her. He used to beat me every time I attempted to get into the flat. And you didn't report this to the police? I did report it, but what's the use? They wouldn't even listen to me. I had no documents, and I looked disheveled. They threatened to put me in jail for 15 days if I didn't leave the premises alone. Later, Anna threw some of my things off the balcony, but I didn't receive any documents or the money I had saved. It's been over a year now. I think she got rid of everything. Maybe she even sold the apartment. She always wanted to move. But how is that even possible? I don't understand. I don't understand either and never will. I truly had no connection to that apartment, but Anna could have calmly told me about it, and I would have left. Don't you have any relatives who could take you in? Ernesto asked. No, my parents died a long time ago. I sold their house to help David with his business. I lived with acquaintances for a while, but they later moved and didn't want to take me with them. I had to wander the streets. A few months ago, I started feeling unwell. I couldn't go to the hospital. I had no documents or money. That's how I ended up here. Ernesto pondered the situation. 
Sending Valeriana back to the street would mean condemning her to a certain death. As a doctor and a decent person, he couldn't allow that. He looked into the eyes of this unfortunate woman once again and saw the despair, fear, and hopelessness within them. I'll leave you in the hospital for two more days. We're not allowed to keep patients without documents for more than three days. Take this time to think about who might be able to help you, he told her before leaving the room. On that day, Ernesto was on duty at the hospital. He shared the shift with Nurse Olivia, who was already aware of the homeless patient story. To pass the time during their long night shift, she decided to ask the doctor more about this woman. What should we do with Valeriana? Olivia asked. For how long will she stay here? For two days, Ernesto replied. And don't look at me so judgmentally. Are you suggesting we just throw her back onto the streets like an unwanted kitten? No, of course not. I'm just curious, what's the plan after that? That's no longer our concern, but at least her stitches will have healed by then. I think you're making it even worse than if you had refused her right away, Olivia remarked. I don't understand your point, Ernesto said, surprised by the nurse's words. You saved her and gave her hope, but she knows that in two days she'll be back on the streets. Here, she's fed and taken care of. What good is it for her to return to a dingy basement again? At the same time, she realizes she doesn't belong here. Her behavior may have made her feel that way if you and Julia hadn't pointed it out, Ernesto retorted. The nurses indeed treated Valeriana differently than other patients. Their behavior made it clear that she was an unwelcome presence. They didn't provide her with vitamins, show her where the bathroom and shower were, answer her questions curtly, or ignore her. I'd like to ask you to stop this behavior, Ernesto firmly stated. Well, to be honest, I don't think she's like our typical homeless patients, Olivia responded. That's correct. Valeriana is in a difficult life situation, and I've been racking my brain for over an hour now, trying to figure out how to help her. By the way, did you visit her in the evening? How is she feeling? Oh, Olivia said, looking scared and guilty, I completely forgot about her. What? So you didn't give her the evening injection? Ernesto glared at Olivia through his brows. No, I told you I forgot. Then go and do it now. What are you waiting for? Ernesto ordered. The nurse rushed to fetch the medication and hurried into Valeriana's room. A moment later, she came out, calling for help. Ernesto, come here immediately. The nurse cried, her face pale with fear. Ernesto quickly jumped up and headed for the room. What happened? Ernesto asked as he hurried into the room. She... She seems to have died, the nurse said with a trembling voice filled with fear. Hurry, come over here. It's all covered in blood, and she cut her veins open. Why are you hesitating? Ernesto lashed out in anger. Haven't you seen blood before? Haven't you had medical training? Ernesto quickly checked her pulse and examined the patient. She's alive, and everything seems normal. Give me bandages, rubbing alcohol, needles, and thread. We need to stitch her up, he said. The bleeding was stopped, and the wounds were sutured. Throughout the procedure, Valeriana remained conscious and wept continuously. She mumbled, Why are you saving me? At this moment, Olivia truly felt sorry for the woman. If not for her forgetfulness, the situation could have ended much more tragically. You saved my life again, Valeriana said after Ernesto had finished dressing her wounds. But what's the point? I'll have to go back to the streets where no one needs me. What kind of life is this? Every life matters, Ernesto replied. Have you decided to transfer from our department to the psychiatric one? What? Valeriana didn't understand the doctor's jest. After a suicide attempt, I am obligated to have you assessed by a psychiatrist. You might just end up there, Ernesto said. That you'll have a roof over your head. I didn't have such intentions. I really do see my situation as hopeless, Valeriana explained. You're a good person, but it's clear that I'm doomed. 
Whether it's a psychiatric hospital or not, perhaps it's a way out. No, you have no idea what awaits you there. You don't appear to be mentally unstable. I need to go now. I can leave you alone and trust that you won't harm yourself again, or I can arrange security for you. I'm sorry, Valeriana replied timidly. I promise I won't cause you any more trouble. If it weren't for the negligence of my unreliable nurse, I wouldn't have saved you in the first place, Ernesto said as he bid farewell. You've been given another chance. Think about it. You're an adult woman, yet you engage in such things. Ernesto left the room, feeling dizzy. Olivia, administer a sedative to Valeriana, he instructed. Let her get some rest. We can be assured that the night shift will end without any incidents. Can I trust you not to forget this? The nurse nodded obediently and went to fetch the medication. Ernesto went to bed, but sleep eluded him. He spent the entire night analyzing what had transpired. How dire must this woman's situation be for her to attempt such an act? Any life, even the unhappiest, is better than death. It was clear to Ernesto that he couldn't simply release Valeriana. In that case, she would be condemned. He decided to let her stay with him. He lived alone, seldom at home. Having a female presence in the apartment might be helpful around the house, and they could figure things out over time. With these thoughts, he drifted off to sleep by morning. He had a strange dream. In the dream, Ernesto found himself in a room with multiple doors. He tried to open them, but none would budge. He shouted and called for help, but no one responded. In despair, he began to break the walls. After many attempts, one of the walls collapsed. Behind it was Valeriana, in the exact same position. He approached her, took her hand, and, at that moment, all the doors in both rooms swung open. A bright light streamed from the newly opened paths and Ernesto woke up. What a nightmare, he told himself. Now I understand what it's like not to see your way in hope. Ernesto regarded this dream as significant. He felt like he had been in Valeriana's place. Her entire life was a room with closed doors. If he hadn't appeared in her path, certain death awaited her. And maybe she was his lifeline. Perhaps this encounter would help them both survive. After this prophetic dream, Ernesto was resolute in his decision to invite Valeriana to his place. All that remained was to find a polite and careful way to propose this option to her. He believed she was a proud woman who might refuse. Ernesto chose not to rush and decided to offer Valeriana help on the day of her discharge, ensuring she would agree without changing her mind, assuming she hadn't found another solution by then. The day came when it was time to discharge Valeriana. Ernesto arrived in her room early in the morning. Hello. I have some good news for you. We won't keep you here any longer. You're being discharged today, Ernesto said with as much optimism as he could muster. To be honest, I don't share your joy, equals Valeriana replied, trying to inject some humor into the melancholic situation. I'd like to offer you a way out, but I want to make it clear, I'm not insisting. If it makes you uncomfortable, you can decline. Ernesto paused to ensure Valeriana was listening attentively. I live alone. My wife left me, so I wouldn't mind having some female company around the house. You're inviting me to your place? Valeriana sought clarification. Yes. I genuinely feel sorry for you. I don't want the self-harm incident to happen again. You also look and speak like an intelligent woman. I trust you, and for some reason, I want to help. I spend most of my time at work, so we won't see much of each other, Ernesto explained. What about what other people will think? Doesn't that bother you? Valeriana asked. First, there's a significant age difference between us. Valeriana was over 50. Secondly, we won't tell anyone about this. Thirdly, who should even be concerned about it? So, what do you say? Should I grab another set of bed linens from the closet? Ernesto asked. Of course, I can't refuse. You know I have nowhere else to go. I'm incredibly grateful to you. I promise not to inconvenience you for long, Valeriana responded. 
We can discuss that later. You can stay for as long as you need. Right now, I'll finish processing the paperwork and we'll head home, Ernesto concluded, leaving the room. After lunch, Ernesto informed his workplace that he urgently needed to go home. He lied, saying his neighbors had heating issues and he and Valeriana drove to his apartment. The woman felt quite awkward, which didn't go unnoticed by Ernesto. He tried to reassure her through his behavior that having a guest at his place didn't make him uncomfortable. I know that hospital food isn't great, so I suggest we eat something homemade, Ernesto said, helping Valeriana get settled. Let's order something right now. Why? Valeriana asked. If you have potatoes and some meat in the fridge, I can cook us lunch. Everything will be ready within half an hour. Valeriana wanted to reciprocate in some way. It was clear from the stacks of pizza boxes and delivery bags in the kitchen that the doctor hadn't had a home-cooked meal for a long time. I don't know about the meat, but we definitely have some sausages, Ernesto replied cheerfully. And so, they lived together. Ernesto spent his entire days at the hospital, saving lives, while Valeriana took care of the lonely doctor's household. She recovered very quickly, cleaned every surface in the apartment, bought groceries within the modest budget Ernesto had allocated to her, and even washed all the clothes. None of Ernesto's friends knew that he had taken in a homeless patient. He hadn't even told Antonio. The neighbors assumed that a distant relative had come to stay with him. One day, the elderly lady from the neighboring apartment inquired about it, and Ernesto affirmed it to avoid further questions. Two months had passed since Valeriana had moved in with Ernesto. One day, his ex-wife called him, which surprised him because he didn't expect to speak to her again. Hello, Ernesto politely answered the call from his ex-wife. Have you missed me? Hi. Well, of course. She laughed in response. Are you at home? No, I'm at work. Of course, Natalia sighed heavily. Where else would you be? Will you be home in about two weeks? Stop teasing. You must have been shitting the brains of another man for a while now, Ernesto retorted with a hint of sarcasm. All right, draw. So, when can I catch you at home? I need to pick up my passport. I somehow forgot to take it with me. I'm on a night shift today, so not until tomorrow. I need it today. Maybe I'll drive over to your place, get the keys, and bring them back later? Natalia suggested. No, I'm about to head into the surgery room. I don't know how long I'll be there. Besides, why do you need to make the trip? I have someone living in my place. She'll let you in. Oh, Ernesto, have you found a new life companion? Natalia teased. No, it's my relative who's come to visit. Valeriana. Knock, and she'll let you in. I'll call her to let her know, Ernesto replied, brushing off Natalia's taunts. I don't recall you having any relatives like her. Do you need your passport today, or can you wait for me until tomorrow? Ernesto started to get annoyed. All right, all right, tell her I'll be there in an hour. Ernesto informed Valeriana about his ex-wife's visit and went back to work. Antonio overheard his friend's conversation and became curious about the relative living with him. He had noticed that Ernesto was behaving somewhat secretively and had changed. Sometimes, Ernesto would skip lunch and bring food in a container, which was very unlike him since he never used to eat homemade meals, even when he was married. Maybe you can tell me who this relative is that staying with you? Antonio decided to press for the truth. Oh, just a distant aunt from the village, Ernesto tried to brush off his friend. Don't lie. The arrival of relatives is not something you can keep quiet about. I doubt your aunt would collect containers for you and iron your shirts. Nobody can tolerate guests for that long. You've been acting strange for a while now. What's it to you? Ernesto didn't want to discuss this topic, but he realized that Antonio wouldn't let it go. It matters because my best friend has brought a woman into his life and doesn't want to talk about it. You should share big news, but you're keeping secrets from me. That's not right. I haven't brought anyone into my life. 
You're making a big deal out of it. Ernesto hesitated for a moment, but was growing tired of keeping this secret and enduring his friend's suspicious looks. Okay, I'll tell you, but let's agree up front, no judgments or moralising. Of course. When have I ever judged you? Do you remember that homeless woman I operated on? Oh no, don't tell me you took her in. We had a deal. She was trying to harm herself, and she really had nowhere else to go. I couldn't just throw her out like unwanted junk, so I invited her to stay with me. In return, she's taking care of my household. That's where the food and iron shirts come from. It's like living with my mom again. I always knew you were a dependable person, but to this extent. Antonio had many things he wanted to say to his friend, but he held back because he had promised not to judge. I just feel sorry for her. She's not bothering me. And how long will this go on? A lifetime? Right now, Valeriana is working on getting her documents in order. Once she does, she'll find a job. As soon as she gets back on her feet and saves some money, she'll move out. Understood. Well, it's your business. You could have told me Antonio supported his friend. Natalia arrived at her ex-husband's apartment about an hour and a half after her call. Valeriana was feeling a bit anxious about the meeting, although Ernesto assured her that he had sorted things out and explained them to his ex-wife. When Valeriana opened the door, she quickly retreated into another room because she recognized the woman. She hoped that Natalia didn't recognize her, but Natalia also remembered the familiar face. They simply greeted each other. Natalia swiftly took the documents and left. Later that day, she tried to recall where she had seen Valeriana before and remembered. In the evening, Ernesto's phone rang again, with Natalia on the line. Hello, dear, Ernesto ironically greeted her. Do you want to take something else from me? No, we need to talk, his ex-wife replied. Curious about something? I can't talk about this on the phone. You said you have a day off tomorrow. So, let's meet. All right, if it's that urgent, better in the evening. Then at five o'clock, I'll send you the place where I'll reserve a table, Natalia replied and hung up. Ernesto was intrigued. When he returned from work, Valeriana was already awake and preparing breakfast. He decided to ask her if Natalia had mentioned anything when she came over. What did you think of my wife? Ernesto asked. She's a striking woman. You're a fool for letting her go, Valeriana laughed. Yes, she's beautiful. And such a woman shouldn't live in the conditions I can provide. I agree with her on that. But her temperament is quite explosive. Did she say anything yesterday? No, we just exchanged greetings, and she left quickly. Ernesto pondered. He noticed that Valeriana had become a bit nervous when he inquired about Natalia. So, he assumed that something had happened between them yesterday or earlier. He decided to wait until the evening to find out. Natalia, like any self-respecting woman, was late by about 20 minutes. Ernesto began to worry that she wouldn't show up. When he was about to call her, his ex-wife walked into the cafe. She seemed to look younger and more beautiful than before. Divorce seems to have worked in your favor, Ernesto made a dubious compliment. I could say the same about you. Your new guest takes good care of you. She's my aunt. She's just helping with the household, Ernesto brushed it off. I wanted to talk to you about her, Natalia decided to get straight to the point. Are you sure she's your relative? Natalia, what kind of questions are these? Are you jealous or something? No. Where did you say she used to live before? In a village, that's why she's so good at taking care of things. Natalia had something on her mind, and she wanted to get to the bottom of it quickly. Uh-huh, Natalia nodded but pursed her lips into a tight line. Ernesto knew this woman well, and this action indicated that she didn't trust him. I don't understand you. You cheated on me, left me, and now, after several months, you want to create a scene of jealousy? Ernesto asked. Oh, come on, no one needs you. I'm not jealous. 
I'm trying to figure something out, Natalia replied. What exactly? Why are you lying to me, or were you lying to me before, or is Valeriana deceiving you? Well, I can't understand the last part at all. Can you just be direct? Enough with these riddles, Ernesto couldn't hold back his impatience. I know Valeriana, Natalia finally revealed herself. She was a regular visitor to my salon. She came almost every day for hairstyling and makeup. She left us substantial sums of money. Sometimes she even forgets about her salary. I'm wondering, if she's your relative, how could I not know about her? And you're telling me she didn't live in any village. You're probably confusing her with someone else, Ernesto doubted. Stop it. Don't you remember our richest and most grateful client? Of course, Estefanio Santos. I've only seen such watches as his in pictures, Ernesto agreed. Now, imagine him coming to you several times a week. Would you ever mistake him for someone else? No, you're right. So, you mean Valeriana was a very wealthy lady? Absolutely. She was like a role model to me. She looked fantastic at 55 and took excellent care of herself. Everything she had, like handbags and glasses, was from luxury brands. So when I saw her in the state she's in now, I couldn't believe my eyes. She had a tragedy in her life. I practically took her off the streets, Ernesto shared. That sad. We thought she had gone somewhere. She hadn't visited us for a long time. But how is this possible? Why did she end up on the street? Please tell me, or I'll go crazy. Natalia pleaded. Ernesto couldn't resist his ex-wife's pleading look. She had often used it when she needed something. Besides, he knew that Natalia wouldn't leave him alone. So he told the story of Valeriana from the very beginning. Do you know anything else about her? Ernesto asked. She told me that her husband died, she kicked out her stepdaughters, and she couldn't provide more details. I don't know much more. I remember her husband was involved in jewelry, and she was into charity work. She was a very kind woman. That's about it. It's a shame that her life took such a turn. Well, I must go. I'm leaving on a trip tomorrow morning. Good luck to you. The former spouses said their goodbyes, and Ernesto headed home. He contemplated the information he had just received. How does life work this way? You could have lots of money and connections, and in one moment, it all disappears like a dream. Even if Valeriana manages to recover her documents, she won't be able to return to her former status. Ernesto came home and decided to inquire about his houseguest's past. It turns out they had been living under the same roof for two months without knowing anything about each other's past lives. Valeriana, why haven't you ever mentioned your husband? Were you unhappy with him? Ernesto asked. No, we lived very well together. Anna was the only problem. But David wasn't my husband. We were just living together, she replied. What was your David like? What did he do? Ernesto asked. He was a kind person and even proposed to me, but I didn't want to rush things. He had a dream of moving to a country house with his own terrace, garden, and a pool. Why didn't you move there? We didn't have the chance. He bought an old house that was falling apart. To be honest, Anna and I advised against it, but he was stubborn. The plot of land was really nice. There was a forest right behind the fence. He used to go there every weekend. We couldn't understand why. Having your own house is good. I'd like to change my cramped apartment for a house in the woods too, Ernesto said. When David passed away, Anna immediately put the house up for sale at a giveaway price. She has no use for it at all, but I wouldn't mind living there, away from the city hustle and bustle. Then, a thought struck Valeriana. She straightened up, her eyes lighting up. Let's take a look. Perhaps the listing is still available. Well, just because I'm curious, Ernesto agreed. He had almost forgotten that Valeriana hadn't answered the main question. He handed her his phone, and she frantically searched for the house listing. 
Valeriana scrolled through the pages on the screen for at least ten minutes until a triumphant Eureka was heard. Here, take a look at this beauty, she said, handing the phone to Ernesto. He was initially skeptical about the idea, but eventually became genuinely interested. The nature is truly beautiful. The house itself is SOSO, to be honest, but the forest. It's a great option as a summer cottage, Ernesto commented. David wanted to completely renovate the house and move there. It would be great to fulfill his dream and live there, Valeriana suggested. Are you implying that I should buy this property? Ernesto chuckled. Why not? Valeriana replied with enthusiasm. I don't know about your financial situation, but the price here is extremely low. I think Anna would be more than happy to get rid of this property and maybe even offer a discount. The price is very attractive and the house is within the city limits. If you consider it a summer cottage, it's convenient and you can reach it by minibus. Ernesto fell into deep thought. You know, I have some savings, but these are my last funds. If I buy the house, I won't have any financial cushion, Ernesto expressed his concerns. I'm not insisting. We just decided to take a look at this house out of curiosity, Valeriana explained. But you've piqued my interest, I'll think about it. Ernesto did indeed contemplate buying the house. He considered it somewhat irrational to spend money on non-essential real estate, but he could also view it as an investment. With renovations and improvements, the house and land could potentially be sold for a higher price. In the morning, Ernesto woke up with the same thoughts he had gone to sleep with about the house. He decided to consult with his friend, although he had a hunch about the response he would receive. Well, it's a good idea, Antonio unexpectedly supported him. Seriously? Ernesto was surprised. I thought you'd try to talk me out of it. After your idea of taking in a stranger from the street to live with you, the thought of buying a house seems very reasonable. The friends laughed, and Ernesto showed Antonio pictures of the house. Antonio praised the plot of land and the forest. The house itself needs some investment, but it's decent. The price is excellent, Antonio gave his verdict. I think I'll use it as a summer cottage at first. Then, in a year or two, maybe I'll save up for renovations and resell it if I don't change my mind, Ernesto shared his plans. Go for it. I'll be the first in line for barbecues. In the evening, Ernesto decided to talk to Valeriana once more. He wanted to ask her if she would like to go with him to view the house. What? Valeriana was frightened by Ernesto's suggestion. The seller is Anna. If she sees me, you won't be able to buy the house. That's true. What should I be prepared for when dealing with her? Ernesto asked. I think she'll be polite to you. She's not a bad girl. It's just that she has developed some inexplicable hatred towards me. Ernesto called the number listed in the advertisement. A very friendly woman answered, and if he hadn't known about her treatment of Valeriana, he would have never suspected such a sweet voice could harbor malice. The viewing was scheduled for Saturday. Ernesto quickly reached the property, noting that the short commute was an additional advantage. Anna, a young and beautiful woman with an athletic figure, was already waiting at the house. She politely greeted him, gave him a tour of the house and the land, and mentioned that she needed to sell it urgently, offering a slight reduction in price. Ernesto agreed to purchase the house. While Anna was showing him the property, he noticed her unusual gait and the fact that she often grabbed her back. Congratulations on your purchase. I hope you'll be happy here, Anna said as they parted. I'm sorry for the intrusive question, Ernesto politely began. But I can see that you take care of yourself, and you're clearly into sports at a more than amateur level. Yes, I'm a fitness trainer, Anna confirmed Ernesto's suspicion. Can I ask if you've seen a doctor recently? Actually, I haven't. I can't seem to find the time, though I should. I've been having frequent back pains lately. That's why I asked you. You see, I'm a surgeon, and I can confidently say that you have a herniated disc, but I can provide a precise diagnosis after an examination. Oh, is it serious? Anna got worried. 
If it's not too severe, it can be treated with medication. However, judging by the symptoms, you might require surgery. You have my number. Let me write down the hospital address. Come tomorrow, and we'll take a look at your back. All right, I'll definitely come. I'll have to give you a discount for this, Anna smiled. Ernesto didn't mention his decision to help the woman who had disrupted Valeriana's life. He simply shared the good news with her about buying the house. So, how was it? Did you like it? Valeriana asked. It was excellent. The fresh air. I didn't thoroughly inspect the house, but I can tell you that Anna is leaving it with all the things that belong to your David. It seems she hasn't even touched them, Ernesto replied. Great. Maybe we'll find something useful there. I'd like to know what he kept in there. I've only been there a couple of times. David often went to the house alone. We'll finalize the deal after the weekend. We can go there as the new owners on Tuesday or Wednesday. I'll take a couple of personal days from work to make it happen, Ernesto concluded. The next day, Anna came to the hospital as agreed. Unfortunately, her diagnosis was confirmed and she needed surgery. Since she was leaving soon, they didn't postpone the procedure. The herniated disc was removed the following day and Anna stayed in the hospital for a couple of days, causing a delay in the house deal. Hello, Olivia, Anna addressed the nurse. You have an amazing doctor here, Dr. Ernesto. He performed surgery on me yesterday. Yes, the nurse agreed. He's an excellent specialist. You're lucky you ended up in his care. I think so too. I'd like to express my gratitude. Can you tell me if he prefers cognac or whiskey? Or would it be better to thank him with money? That would be pointless, dear, Olivia replied. He doesn't accept any gifts, so don't bother. Just say thank you. How strange. Anna laughed. People like him still exist nowadays? That's unusual. He didn't have to help me at all. That's just how he is, compassionate and not motivated by material gain. Anna fell into deep thought. She decided that the nurse was simply unaware of her boss's affairs. The time for Anna's discharge arrived. Ernesto invited Anna to his office to complete the paperwork. Congratulations. Today, we set you free, Ernesto said, delivering his usual joke. You're a very kind person, Ernesto. I'm glad we had a chance to meet. You can count on a good discount for the house. And this is for you too, Anna said, handing him a package. Thank you for the discount, but I can't accept it. I don't take gifts for my work. A little disappointed, Anna looked at the package. She thought, so, the nurse was telling the truth. What an amazing person. But I can't accept that. You've dedicated your time to me. How can I not thank you? Anna insisted. Ernesto pondered. He thought it might be an opportunity to help Valeriana. Gathering his courage, he decided to reveal his intentions. You know, Anna, he began, if you're so keen on showing gratitude, you can indeed do that. Anna reached for the package again, but the doctor stopped her. No, I'm not talking about gifts. You can do a good deed for me, he continued, slowing down his speech. I hope you understand. I'm acquainted with a woman whose fate you've directly influenced in a not-so-favorable way. I don't understand what you mean, Anna said, looking at the doctor with surprise. A few months ago, I operated on a patient without documents. She had no home or relatives, but she told me about you. Anna guessed who Ernesto was talking about. Her cheeks flushed with embarrassment. She turned her eyes away. It was clear she felt ashamed, and this somewhat pleased Ernesto. If there was such a reaction, it meant not all hope was lost. I see you've already guessed who I'm talking about, Ernesto clarified. I have a suspicion, Anna replied in a hoarse voice, overwhelmed by emotion. So, I won't pass judgment on your past actions. But you can at least help Valeriana to some extent, as her situation was partly the result of your actions. I. Anna began to fidget, struggling to express herself, but the words didn't come together. 
Ernesto decided to end her torment and tell her what he wanted. Once again, what's done is done. We'll leave it to your conscience. But you can at least return her documents, assuming they're still intact. Of course. I don't know why she hasn't come to get them herself, Anna lied. If you don't want to meet her, and I doubt she's very eager to see you either, you can bring the documents tomorrow when we're signing the sales contract. You'll be able to find them by tomorrow, won't you? All right, let's do it that way, the girl agreed, exhaling with relief. After Ernesto gave Anna her medical records and recovery recommendations, she hastily left the office. Meanwhile, Ernesto continued to wonder how such a sweet and fragile person could have committed wrongdoing against Valeriana. For the signing of the documents, Ernesto went alone. Valeriana had chosen not to see Anna, so she remained at home, preparing food for an evening picnic. They decided to celebrate their new house purchase with a delicious barbecue in their new garden. Ernesto didn't want to mention to Valeriana that Anna would be returning her documents. He wanted it to be a surprise. The transaction went smoothly, and Valeriana's documents were now in Ernesto's possession. He returned after a couple of hours, making preparations to leave again. When Valeriana saw the house that used to belong to her late husband, tears welled up in her eyes. Although she had been here only a couple of times, the rooms made her feel like David should walk in any moment to continue their peaceful life there. I feel like David's spirit is present here, she shared her feelings. I hope it's not a haunted house, Ernesto jokingly said. No, not like that, Valeriana laughed. But I believe you, he replied, and then handed Valeriana a gift from an old acquaintance. Is this from Anna? Valeriana was surprised. Maybe it's better not to accept it, then. I think you'll like it, Ernesto said, handing Valeriana her documents. Overwhelmed with emotion, Valeriana couldn't hold back tears. She hugged Ernesto and expressed her gratitude. How did you do this? I thought they were lost a long time ago. What a relief. How can I thank you? She gushed. Find the barbecue grill and skewers in the shed, as Anna said, they should be there. I would like to explore the house more thoroughly. I want to find some clothes because it might get chilly in the evening, Ernesto said. Valeriana hugged Ernesto once more, placed her documents in her bag, and headed to the shed to retrieve the barbecue equipment. Ernesto, meanwhile, continued to examine the house. During his thorough inspection, Ernesto found something unusual on the bedroom ceiling, a hook of some kind. He pulled on it, and a small door opened, revealing a rope ladder. Interesting, Ernesto mused aloud. Is this a hidden room? He grabbed a flashlight and decided to see what was in the attic. Ernesto climbed up the rope ladder and found himself in a small space. The ceiling was low, so he had to crouch down to look around. He illuminated the corners with his flashlight, but didn't find anything particularly interesting at first. The attic was quite spacious, occupying the entire roof space of the house. Various odds and ends lay scattered about, like old rags and mousetraps. Ernesto was about to leave when he noticed a chest near the far wall. He carefully made his way over, avoiding the mousetraps. There was no lock on the chest. Ernesto decided to bring it down to examine the contents in the daylight. He tried to lift it, but it was heavy. So, he descended and called Valeriana for help. She climbed up, and Ernesto passed the chest to her. Do you have any idea what could be inside? Ernesto asked Valeriana. I don't know, it could be anything, she replied. Maybe it's a hidden treasure? Ernesto joked. He examined the chest in his hands, unsure of how to open it. There was no visible lock, but the lid wouldn't budge. After a moment, he noticed a combination lock. It seems we won't find out what's inside, he said sadly. There's a combination lock here. Let's try to guess the code, then, Valeriana said encouragingly. There are numbers here. I knew David well. His memory was SOSO. He probably used a date. Okay, let's try his birthday, Ernesto suggested. Valeriana named a date, but the lock didn't open. 
Ernesto then suggested they try Anna's birthday, thinking that perhaps it was their daughter's special day, but the lid remained shut. How about your birthday? Ernesto asked. I doubt he loved me enough for that, but let's give it a shot. Valeriana provided her birthday, but the lock still didn't yield. They continued trying various numerical combinations suggested by Valeriana, but nothing seemed to work. I'm running out of options. Let's leave it for now. The coals are burning out, Valeriana said dejectedly. Ernesto agreed, and they went out to the garden to enjoy their barbecue. Both of them looked at the tall pine trees swaying gently in the light breeze. This place is lovely, Ernesto concluded. Yes, David dreamed that we'd one day sit with him like this, watching shooting stars, making wishes, and not worrying about anything, Valeriana said, her eyes welling up with tears. He sounds like a romantic, Ernesto responded, but then he had a sudden realization. If your David was so romantic and deeply in love with you. Ernesto rushed back into the house and returned with the chest in his hands. We already tried my birthday. It didn't work, Valeriana said indifferently. That's too ordinary. Tell me, when did you first meet him? Ernesto asked quickly. Valeriana mentioned a date without much hope. However, the mechanisms of the lock clicked one by one, and eventually, the lock opened. Ernesto raised the lid, his eyes widening, but he immediately closed it again. Valeriana, he addressed her, now surprised and delighted. You never told me what David did for a living. Ernesto, of course, remembered what Natalia had told him about Valeriana's husband, but he decided to confirm it with her once more. He was a jeweler, Valeriana replied. He crafted jewelry and sometimes resold them. What's in there? Don't keep me waiting. Then, congratulations are in order. Judging by the looks of it, this seems to be your inheritance, Ernesto said, turning the chest and lifting the lid. Valeriana gasped and covered her face when she saw the contents of the box. It was filled to the brim with diamonds, rings, necklaces, and other precious gemstones. The golden pieces shimmered beautifully in the fading sunlight. Unbelievable! Valeriana exclaimed. I knew he was saving up for our retirement. David always said that we'd live carefree in our golden years. But I thought he had a safe hidden somewhere in the apartment, and Anna had probably already emptied it. It seems David was remarkably foresight, Ernesto replied. I wonder how much all of this is worth. Hide it quickly. People might kill for such wealth, Valeriana said with a hint of fear. In that, I agree with you. I suggest we celebrate this with champagne. The most expensive one. We can afford it now, Valeriana joyfully declared. What are you planning to do with all of this? Ernesto asked. What do you mean, me? This is your treasure, and it rightfully belongs to you, Valeriana replied. Stop that. Let it be my token of appreciation for you. Don't even think about refusing. I know your principles. This is not the time for that. You saved my life twice, returned my documents, bought this house with your own money, and found the chest while also figuring out the password. If I had known that this house would pay off so quickly, I wouldn't have bargained, Ernesto chuckled. Ernesto placed the found gems into a safe deposit box in a bank, thinking it would be more secure. The realization of such wealth resting in his apartment was strange and somewhat frightening. Valeriana found a job at a beauty salon. In her youth, she had worked as a hairdresser, so she was skilled at haircuts and coloring. Every weekend, Valeriana and Ernesto would visit their house. One day, Ernesto realized he was growing less and less eager to return to the apartment. You know, Valeriana, Ernesto said one evening on the terrace, why don't we tear down this old dump and build a huge house here? And why not? We have the money, Valeriana supported her husband's suggestion. The nature here is incredibly beautiful. It would be wonderful to live in this place. And I'll sell the apartment. I wanted to talk about moving as well, Valeriana began. You've done so much for me. I think it's time for me to set out on my own. 
I've saved up some money and found a few rental options. I think it's time for me to move out. Wait, Ernesto shook his head. Why would you want to live in rental apartments when we have so much money that you could buy multiple apartments in any part of the city? I'm repeating it again, I have no claim on the gemstones. I have my principles too, Valeriana retorted. Let's suppose that if I move in here, my apartment will remain vacant. I don't have a pressing need to sell it. But honestly, I wouldn't want to live alone in a massive house we're going to build. We're lucky when we're together, so I won't push you away. You're like family to me already. You're like a younger brother to me too, Valeriana smiled. The conversation about moving was closed. Ernesto began construction. Despite his newfound wealth, he didn't reduce his work hours and entrusted the demolition and construction to a hired team. Valeriana continued working at the beauty salon. One day, a young woman came to Valeriana for a hairstyle. She wore dark sunglasses and tried to hide her face. Hello, Christina, Valeriana greeted. Those sunglasses suit you, but they're getting in the way of my work. Hello, I'm in trouble, Christina sadly said, removing her glasses. Beneath them was a large boil above her eyebrow, significantly marring her beautiful face. I've been invited to a wedding, and look at this. Can you style my hair to cover this monstrosity? Christina asked. Of course, I'll help you, Valeriana replied. The hairstyling took several hours, so Valeriana decided to pass the time with a conversation. Have you seen a doctor about this? Valeriana asked. No, the client nonchalantly replied. Why would I? It's just a pimple. I wanted to pop it, but it swelled up like this. Girl, it's not just a pimple. The inflammation has already started spreading across your eye. Let me give you the number of a good surgeon. He can help you. Do you think I should go to the hospital? I insist. My surgeon friend is excellent. He saved my life twice. And what you have on your face looks quite serious. All right, give me the number. I'll go for a consultation, Christina agreed. Valeriana provided the young woman with the number and warned Ernesto to receive her. Two days later, Christina arrived for her appointment. Ernesto conducted an examination and gave his verdict. It needs to be cut open and the pus removed. Is it a surgery? Christina asked, apprehensive. Don't worry. The whole procedure, including preparation, will take no more than 30 minutes, reassured the doctor. If you're not in a hurry, I can do it right now. Christina agreed, and the surgery went well. After removing the boil, Ernesto ran into his friend Antonio in the corridor. You seem mysteriously happy today, Antonio noted. What do you mean? Ernesto asked, not understanding. You're unusually cheerful. Maybe it has something to do with your patient who just left. Well, she's quite attractive. It's always nice to help a beautiful woman, Ernesto replied. She has no ring on her finger. Maybe you should have asked her out, Antonio winked. It's about time you started focusing on your personal life, my friend. I don't think she would have agreed. But I'm sure she would. She left here looking so radiant, as if she hadn't had her forehead sliced open, but had just received a Thai massage. Come on, you're just saying that, Ernesto waved off his friend. However, he started to contemplate whether he should ask Christina out for real. He had taken a liking to her, although he was unsure if the feeling was mutual. Christina, right after her operation, went to Valeriana's beauty salon. On the way, she bought a box of chocolates. Valeriana, I want to express my gratitude, Christina said, approaching her. I can see you've been to the doctor, Valeriana remarked, gesturing to the bandage. Well, how did it go? Excellent. What was I afraid of? And Ernesto has such beautiful eyes. I was looking into them and forgot everything else. I didn't even realize they cut my forehead, Christina laughed. And, by the way, he's not married, Valeriana perked up a bit. He's a very handsome and single man. Really? 
Christina mused and twirled a strand of hair around her finger. I caught the bouquet at a wedding. Well, then it's like fate brought you together, Valeriana chuckled. But I can't make the first move, can I? What if he doesn't like me? I'd embarrass myself. If you want, I'll find out for you. If you've piqued his interest, he'll call you, Valeriana offered her help. I'll arrange it. Let's do it. Who knows, maybe it could lead to a wedding for real, Christina agreed. Tell me, is he as good as he seems? I've had some bad relationship experiences before. My ex fiance used to beat me and wouldn't let me go outside without him, even though he was very sweet and welcoming in the beginning. What a nightmare. Valeriana shuddered. Ernesto is nothing like that. I'm telling you. He's a surgeon. He saves lives. Do you think I would recommend a girl to a tyrannical man? In the evening, Valeriana decided to suddenly find out whether Ernesto had caught the interest of her acquaintance, but she didn't know how to do it without him realizing she was interested. However, Ernesto himself initiated a conversation about the girl, which made Valeriana very happy. That Christina who came today, Ernesto began casually. She was here for you, right? Of course. I thought she wouldn't dare, Valeriana teased. So, how is she? Fine. They removed everything in about 30 minutes. She'll be good as new in a week. What do you think about her? Is she attractive, isn't she? Valeriana asked with curiosity, burning to see these two together. She's attractive and interesting, Ernesto answered a little hesitantly. By the way, she's single. I mean, she doesn't have a man, Valeriana added. What's going on? Ernesto started to catch on. Did you send her to me on purpose? Of course, she intentionally grew that boil in her eye to seduce you, Ernesto, Valeriana feigned anger. I met her myself a few days ago. I saw she was in trouble and offered to help, just like in your best traditions. Don't be upset. I just find it all a bit strange, Ernesto tried to reassure her. Do you think she'd go on a date with me? How should I know? Valeriana shrugged, although she was genuinely thrilled. Give her a call and ask. Do you still have her number? I do, but I think it's not right. You're a grown man. Valeriana teased him. Are you getting married for the first time or something? You're so indecisive. It was easier in my youth, Ernesto defended himself. What if she thinks I'm abusing my position? I didn't ask for her number for dating. She might think I'm some kind of maniac. And now you've become an old man, is that it? You're still young, my dear friend. And you're asking an old lady like me for advice, Valeriana playfully charmed him with her humility and Ernesto's shyness. Just send a message, ask how she's feeling after the surgery, and everything will naturally unfold from there, Valeriana advised. Ernesto did just that, and they texted back and forth all evening. From Ernesto's satisfied smile, Valeriana realized the date was set. The next day, he had a day off, but he got up early, shaved, took several showers, and tried on all his shirts, measuring each tie multiple times. Why are you getting dressed so meticulously? Valeriana asked, hearing the commotion from the other room. I have a date with Christina today. I'm trying to decide what to wear, Ernesto replied. Right now? Valeriana asked. No, it's at 6 o'clock in the evening, Ernesto replied. So, it's currently 8 in the morning. Aren't you getting ready a bit too early? Valeriana chuckled at her friend. I'm nervous. What's so funny? Ernesto felt a little offended. I haven't been on a date in over 10 years. The more you stress and dress up, the worse it gets. I'm telling you this as an experienced woman. Relax. If she's already interested in you, half the work is done. Your excessive efforts won't help, Valeriana advised. Oh. Ernesto threw his hands up. Thanks for the advice. Help me choose a shirt instead. I don't recommend anything from them. It's all outdated. 
Put on jeans and a t-shirt, Valeriana instructed him. We're actually going to a restaurant, Ernesto clarified. First, we're going shopping. We'll buy you a proper suit and shirt. And you should get rid of all these, Valeriana laughed. Valeriana helped Ernesto choose a suit. He bought an enormous bouquet of flowers and then headed to the restaurant. The date went well. Christina revealed that she worked as a local news reporter, was involved in charity work, and volunteered to help the elderly and homeless animals. Ernesto fell in love with her on their first date. He felt that Christina was just as nervous as he was. However, after hours of conversation, both of them began to relax and feel confident. Christina confessed that she was afraid of entering new relationships due to past bad experiences. Ernesto shared his own failed marriage. They quickly found common ground and conversed as if they had known each other for years. It turned out that the couple shared the same taste in music, enjoyed the same movies, and had many common interests. In general, many things brought them closer. Towards the end of the evening, it became evident that they couldn't let each other go. The next day, Christina came to Valeriana again to share her impressions of the date. You look happy, Valeriana noticed. I guess everything went well. It was just wonderful. Christina confirmed Valeriana's assumptions. It seems like I'm falling in love. How did you know him? I've never met such kind and decent men. Valeriana told Christina the story of her acquaintance with Ernesto and how he had helped her when she needed it most. She also mentioned that she lived with him, but emphasized that she saw him as a younger brother or even a son. Christina listened attentively to Valeriana's story and realized that Ernesto was even better than she had thought. Living together with Valeriana didn't seem to bother Christina, and it didn't seem like Valeriana had any romantic feelings for Ernesto. Ernesto and Christina's relationship deepened. After a few months, Ernesto told his beloved about his wealth. He could trust this girl because she had never shown herself to be materialistic. He shared his plans for the future and proposed that they move in together when the construction was completed. Christina agreed. Her feelings for him remained unchanged after she learned about Ernesto's true financial situation. The only thing that bothered her was that he spent too much time at work. Antonio and Valeriana also emphasized to Ernesto that he needed to reduce his workload. He had already lost one wife due to work. They couldn't afford to let Christina slip away. Christina had a conversation with Ernesto's colleagues. Everyone spoke highly of him, describing him as an excellent specialist. Christina decided to create a report about him. Ernesto initially declined because he didn't consider his work achievements heroic. However, Christina decided to make a series of reports about the doctors in their city. With the support of his colleagues, Ernesto agreed to participate in the project. Their work received a television award. Christina dedicated her victory to her beloved. When she went on stage to receive the trophy, Ernesto joined her and proposed to her. The audience applauded. It was very beautiful and romantic. Christina accepted his proposal. Life went on as usual. The couple eagerly awaited their move. Valeriana finished her last days at the salon and was planning to resign. Ernesto suggested that she focus on household management only. On her last day, Anna scheduled an appointment with Valeriana for a hair coloring session. The very name made Valeriana feel nauseous. No matter how much time passed, she would never be able to forget her stepdaughter's actions and that name would always be associated with her. Valeriana was surprised when her old acquaintance really entered the salon. Hello. Did you choose the right stylist? Valeriana asked, struggling to contain her aggression. Hi, Valeriana. To be honest, I intentionally scheduled with you, Anna said, looking at her stepmother with puppy eyes. Why are you looking at me like this? Have a seat. What hair color are we going for? Valeriana sarcastically said, I'm not going to dye my hair. I came to talk. And to compensate for your time, I'll pay for the appointment. What generosity, Valeriana replied sarcastically. 
Well, if you want to talk, let's go to the break room and discuss. Anna sat across from Valeriana and couldn't hold back her tears. I feel so guilty in front of you. Please forgive me, Anna managed to say. Don't cry. You can't change the past, Valeriana comforted her. She even hugged the girl, whom she was ready to chase away just ten minutes ago. I miss Dad. I miss him too. It's hard for me without him. I think he would want us to reconcile. Of course. It was his dream, Anna responded. He would never have forgiven me for what I did to you. Don't worry. I'm doing well now. Thanks for delivering the documents, Valeriana said. When that doctor talked about you, I wanted to disappear. I think I only realized the depth of my actions at that moment. Yes, Ernesto is an amazing person. If it weren't for him, I wouldn't be here, Valeriana said. Does he live in that house now? Anna asked. No, he tore it down. He's building a new, larger house there, Valeriana replied. Well, it seems like Dad's dream is completely gone. Probably for the best. It's time for me to let him go. Honestly, when I kicked you out, I thought you had somewhere to go. You had so many friends and acquaintances, Anna reflected. As it turns out, in that circle, everything was about money. If you didn't have it, you were useless. At first, they provided me with accommodation. I stayed with a friend, but I quickly became unwanted. I don't want to return to that kind of society, Valeriana explained. There's something else I want to tell you, Anna straightened up and wiped her tears. I'm expecting a baby. What joy! Congratulations! Valeriana sincerely rejoiced for the young woman. How far along are you? Just four weeks, Anna replied. Are you still with the same young man? Yes, he's changed a lot, becoming very caring. He also wanted me to ask for your forgiveness for raising his hand. He did that because I asked him to. I'm so ashamed, Anna began to cry again. Stop it. We won't bring up that topic anymore. I'm glad everything's going well for you, Valeriana consoled her. You should avoid stress. If anything, you can always count on my help. It's almost like my grandchild, isn't it? Or granddaughter. Yes, thank you. Anna fell silent for a moment, taking a sip of water to calm herself. Your story really impressed me. And that doctor, he's an extraordinary person. Did you know he helped me too? I had a hernia, and I didn't even suspect it. He diagnosed me with just a glance and performed the surgery, Anna continued. Ernesto is a true specialist in his field, Valeriana confirmed. I think, Anna continued, if I have a boy, I'll name him after that doctor. And if it's a girl, I'll name her after you. You're so kind. I'm really touched. Valeriana smiled and hugged Anna. She believed in the sincerity of her remorse, even though she didn't mention the found treasures. Valeriana felt that they rightly belonged to Ernesto, and Anna must have inherited a significant fortune from her father as well. They sat and talked for another half an hour until it was time for Valeriana's next client. The construction of the house was coming to an end, and it was time to prepare for the move. Christina suggested investing money not only in real estate, but also in a business. She convinced Antonio, whom she had met during the report filming and who had been featured in one of the episodes, to present the idea of opening their private clinic to Ernesto. He gladly agreed. Ernesto, it's time to grow and develop, Antonio said to his friend. You've done a lot for free healthcare and saved hundreds of lives. It's time to think about your own. I've been thinking, Ernesto said to his friend, I have a wonderful fiancé and good friends. In a month, we'll be moving into the big house I built myself. What else do I need, in your opinion? Brains, my friend, you need more brains, Antonio teased him. Don't take offense, but do you really think it's that simple? Wife, house. First of all, while Christina is happy, you have a beautiful love story and all that, but in a couple of years, you'll see the same thing that happened with Natalia. 
and if you have children, you won't be able to support them with your modest salary. Secondly, the house you've built is huge, two stories. Its maintenance will be much more expensive than that of a small apartment. Third, you do have wealth, but if you only spend it without multiplying it, sooner or later, it will run out. You're right about everything, as usual, Ernesto agreed with his friend. So, what do you suggest about taking bribes? That's why your naivety has been serving you well, Antonio chuckled. Ernesto, you need to open your clinic. Do you think I can do that? Why not? You have experience in management. If you manage a department in our hospital, you'll handle a private clinic just fine. You can hire someone for the paperwork. People know you, and with TV appearances, you have extra advertising. Patients will be lining up at your door. Will you work as a therapist in my clinic? Ernesto jokingly asked, already knowing the answer. I can even be the director if needed, Antonio replied with a laugh. In a month and a half, the construction of the house was completed. Ernesto, Cristina, and Valeriana moved into the new home, and Ernesto sold his apartment. The man couldn't let Valeriana go. She helped with household chores. Soon, Cristina became pregnant, and Valeriana played the role of the nanny. Antonio and Ernesto opened their private clinic, and their business was thriving. During a family dinner attended by Antonio and his wife, Ernesto took the floor. I want to say, he began his speech, I've never been so happy. I'm surrounded by friends, a beloved woman, and soon I'll be a father, something I never would have thought possible in my life. All of this is thanks to one person. Valeriana, you've thanked me many times for saving your life, but I feel like it's me who should thank you. If that patient hadn't come to me that evening, I probably would have long since drunk myself to death or died of loneliness. I want to reiterate that you've thanked me many times, but it's I who should be thanking you. So please accept my gratitude and appreciation. Thank you for being in our lives. Valeriana couldn't hold back her tears at these heartwarming words. Christina clasped her hands to her chest in admiration. Everyone was happy at that moment. The sad events in their lives were no longer remembered, and ahead lay new victories and discoveries. If you're enjoying it as well, leave a like and subscribe to the channel.